Hi, my name is Paul Adams. I'm a UX and product designer with the Sonder Design Collective. And for the past eight months or so, I've been working with the team at UCSF on the open MRS-based Ori application. So just before I get started on exploring some of the design process behind Ori, I think it's important to call out that there's value in this process and that's about centering our solutions uh, on our user. And, and by doing that, we believe that we'll create more successful and sustainable products. And that's by not making assumptions about what people need, but by developing hypotheses based on the evidence that we collect in our research and then validating them as part of that process with real users in the field. The process of crafting the interfaces that you'll see later relies on designers wearing many different hats. Uh, each one of those will be donned at different parts of the process that I'm going to explain today. And you can see uh, a small selection of them here. So I'm going to take you on a tour now of the design process at Aura, and it begins with discovery. So discovery is the beginning part of every project um, that that I work in at, at Ori, and this is basically about gathering evidence. This forms the thinking uh, around the projects that will influence a whole host of different factors later on. And by surrounding ourselves with that evidence, I think it helps us to make uh, better decisions. So some of the evidence that we gather at Ori looks a bit like this. Uh, it does depend on the scope of the particular project, and we'll tailor our approach and our methodologies accordingly. So it could start with requirements drawn up by business analysts or a brief. It definitely includes working with experienced clinicians to understand their workflows and pain points today, usability studies and competitor product analysis of existing tools and EMRs out there, as well as user studies and contextual user interviews. Group design sessions help us to, to co-create there's a body of academic and industry research that we will lean on and discovery workshops are an important part of what we do as well. I'm going to go into that a little more now. So as part of our care and treatment retrospective work, we hosted and facilitated a workshop of clinician users and other organization stakeholders um, from a range of countries where we asked them to describe what they like, what they think could be better and also thinking more innovatively about the care and treatment workflow uh, as it is for them today. You can see an example on the left hand side here of some of the feedback that was collected in the format. Obviously during these COVID-19 times, it's not been possible to get together in person. So we use the tool called Miro, which allows us to collaborate around the kind of digital whiteboard. Following that session, we managed to create a structured set of user needs, and you can see some of those on the right-hand side here. So this describes the user, uh, what it is they're trying to achieve, uh, and why that is. This evidence that we collect in whatever format uh, I described earlier will help to frame the problem that we're going to solve. And this forms the basis of the start of the ideation phase. Here you can see an example of a problem statement that we would draw uh, to influence this ideation. This particular one here refers to care and treatment in a point of care setting and will usually be formatted in this kind of way, beginning with how might we. That problem statement then creates uh, conversations where we will diverge on possible solutions some examples here of how we can do that, but it's about suspending that critical thinking. More is more. We want to generate a lot of ideas here. We want to build and elaborate on other people's ideas as well. So one person may collect uh, an idea on the board that we can then begin to expand on and build on top of. And also think creatively and, and importantly, creative thinking is something that the whole team uh, from development to analysts, as well as designers can get involved in. This is not artistry, it's, it's about thinking in, in, uh, in different ways. And we want to be outcome orientated. Following this kind of generation of different ideas, we'll then apply more critical thinking and, and, and some feasibility around the ideas that have been collected uh, to try and narrow down on one or two concepts to take forward into a design stage. 
This is what we tend to call execution. This is uh, a part that we um, really leverage um, the OpenMRS community and specifically in design, the OpenMRS 3.x design system. So the design system is a really rich set of components and design patterns. It's based on our IBM's carbon design system as Kieran alluded to a little bit earlier. And we've also built on top of it with the specific components that we would need inside an EMR. And we've continued that tradition in Ori as well. You can see a few examples on the screen here of our example of a new form navigation uh, for clinical forms, which was first developed in Ori and has since then made its way back into the reference application uh, and and with that, the open MRS 3.x design system. So it's an example of this kind of circular flow of ideas going one way, but also making their way back into into the community assets as well. At this stage, we take these components and patterns and they start to look fairly familiar to those that might have seen an EMR before. These are the user interfaces that people would interact with. Some examples of design utilizing that DS in Ori uh, can be found in the clinical forms. You can see uh, that form navigation on the left hand side there, as well as a highlight of a more complex design pattern around uh, collecting data for presenting complaints and this multi um, column approach to uh, data entry. This particular screen is optimized, uh, especially for retrospective data entry. The DS or design system um, can also be used as the foundation for new apps and widgets that you might need to develop to meet uh, certain user or organizational needs. One example here is that we developed clinical dashboards, customized clinical dashboards for Ori. The one in front of you is related to a, a HDS clinic. But also other um, applications that might sit slightly outside the patient, uh, the patient chart or the patient flow. And, and the one that you can see on screen here is a, a new lightweight dispensing and pharmacy application that we're working on right now. Following these initial designs, we will iterate based on discussions within the team and we'll do that until we have a high level of confidence in uh, the solution that it's meeting those user needs, but also adhering to latest and best UX uh, best practices. Once we've reached that confidence level, we go into this validation phase. And this is important because this is the phase where we test um, these prototypes and concepts with with real users in the field. So we'll collect feedback from our users in a number of ways. Uh, the two main ones are moderated user testing and unmoderated user testing. Moderated testing um, is usually based on a designer and a user having a one-to-one -one call. Testing sophisticated prototypes. Most often we use a tool called Protopy, which creates uh, real kind of feel applications with feedback and validation as well. We will then observe the user um, completing a series of tasks and goals to try and understand some of the challenges that our solution might have uh, posed to them. The results will be in the form of sort of uh, note, uh, observation notes. Um, here's an example of um, some of those notes collected during our HTS user testing. This will then influence the next round of design ideation. The other way that we can test uh, and the new tool that we've just started to utilize in, in an unmoderated testing way is, is called Maze. And this allows us to test simpler prototypes, but also uh, static screens and images. It gives us an, uh, an understanding of the user's first impressions, as well as their understanding of kind of key features and user flows. The results uh, are slightly different in this sense that we can correct, collect qualitative feedback, but also get this kind of more quantitative analysis of the solution's usability. Um, this is a really interesting tool and, and helps us to kind of scale uh, our user testing um, to far more users than we could on the one-to-one -one calls. Once that kind of uh, process is complete and we've iterated to the point of having a, a high level of confidence within the team that the solution meets our needs as well as organizational goals, then it's time for developer handover. 
This takes the form of a weekly call between designers and developers. This gives us the opportunity to introduce and explain new design patterns and user flows, discuss any concerns around that, but also provide a continuous feedback loop between design and development in the form of design QA. Some of the tools in the stack here are, are Zeppelin, which most developers will be fairly familiar with. And this gives detailed design documentation um, for, the, for the development team to work from. Also a tool called Overflow, which helps to piece together different screens in the flow. So we can see how certain actions would trigger validation or, or, or flows within a set of screens as well. Thanks for uh, taking the time to watch this today. Uh, I hope you uh, understand a little bit more about the design process inside Ori. Uh, looking forward to watching the rest of the presentations. Thanks.